Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The second video on November 24, question paper 2-2. Uh, in this video, we start with question number 6, which is left from the previous video. Farmers in many countries, including the United States of America, keep cows to produce milk. This milk is then sold for human consumption. Table 6.1 shows how the yearly average milk production per cow in the USA changed over a period of 60 years. 1950, it was 2,250 kilograms per year. So mass of milk produced per cow in kilograms per year. And then 1970 went down to 4,500. In 1990, to 6,750. And 2010, it went to 9,400. So from 2,250 to 4,500 to 6,750. And then 9,400. Now they want you to do some maths. And some of you are not very good at maths. Some of you are, of course, brilliant in maths. Between the years 1970 and 2010, a farmer in the USA always had 250 cows producing milk on his farm. Use the data in table 6.1 to calculate the increase in milk production by 250 cows between the years 1970 and 2010. Expre express your answer in the standard form space for working and this is for how many marks this is for three marks and you have to give it to me in kilograms per year and this is mass of milk produced per cow so please everybody figure this out and please do your maths very very carefully because you can these three marks are going to make or break the, your grade from a b you can go into an a from an a you can go into an a star now, basically what you have to do is you have to think of the 250 cows. So you have to multiply 4,500 by 250. And then you have to multiply this by 250. And then you got these two figures. And then you minus it because it says increase in milk production. And then you got this figure. Now we do standard form means what? Standard form means that you look at it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And here you put a dot. So 1.25 into 10, 225 into 10 raised to the power 6, and you got your 3 marks. Then coming to part uh, 2, one reason for the pattern shown by the data in table 6.1 is the use by farmers of artificial selection to breed cows to produce more milk. This is an example of selective breeding. Use this example to describe the main stages in the process of selective breeding. So basically, how are we going to do it? We select for the increased milk production. Uh, you choose the male and the female the female for the milk production and the male the one who's got uh, more female relatives that produce more milk and then you cross them or you reproduce them then you select out of the offsprings and then you repeat this over many generations and you finally get high milk yielding uh, cows so select for increased uh, milk production out of the animals you select the ones which have more milk production and uh, then you cross them and then you select the offsprings which have increased milk production and then you repeat this over many generations. Then the B part of the question says research has shown that 95% of cows used to produce milk in the USA are fed crop plants that have been produced by genetic modification. These crop plants have been produced to provide the cows that eat them with additional vitamins. Outline the stages in the genetic modification process used to produce these crop plants. So you select the gene uh, for the production of a certain vitamin and then you cut out the gene and then you insert the gene into a plasmid and then you use the plasmid as a vector to introduce the gene into the crop plant. So select the gene for the production of vitamins, cut out the gene using a restriction enzyme or using an enzyme. Insert the gene into plasmids. Plasmids go back into the bacteria and then we use these bacteria to be transferring that gene into a crop plant. Last part of the question, genetic modification has been used to change crop plants in other ways. One example of this is the production of crop plants that contain a chemical to make them resistant to insect pests. So the insect pests, when they start eating the leaves, they'll die. Outline two potential risks of growing these crops. Well, of course, there's a lot of risk decline in insect population or it will kill pollinators then this will have, uh, this will affect the or disrupt the food chains and possible of transfer of the gene to other populations 
and this could be having unknown long term effects people uh, using these crops eating the if it's corn or something which the human beings consume we don't know what's going to result in maybe it results in more people developing kidney stones or more people developing cancers so one doesn't know unknown long term effects so uh, you know if so many insects uh, will die basically insects are also pollinators so will kill a lot of pollinators then it will disrupt disrupt the food chains because insects are eaten by birds so maybe those birds will also become uh, will start to die out possible transfer of genes to other pollinators to other sorry not pollinators to other populations of plants and unknown long term effects now coming to the last question it's more sort of a straightforward uh, question there's no ambiguity about it it's just a direct question compare each of these processes diffusion and active transport transpiration and translocation phototropism and gravitropism so you can easily do a very nice comparison in both uh, it compares and please re remember compare means similarities and differences if i said only give the differences then of course only differences but when i say compare i mean you have to give me the similarities and the differences compare always means that so please do give me both of them now in uh, diffusion and active transport if we look at the similarity what is it movement of molecules it, both of, in both of them there is movement of molecules in diffusion it is high to low concentration and of course it is determined by kinetic energy so higher the temperature more the rate of diffusion because increasing temperature will increase the kinetic energy active transport is low to high low concentration to high concentration and in this energy is required which has been released by the process of respiration so in diffusion it's kinetic energy here it is the energy which has been released by the process of respiration so diffusion and active transport similarities and differences so the similarities this is why i've written the word s similarities are both in both it's the movement of molecules now the differences are in diffusion it's kinetic energy and high to low concentration in active transport is low to high concentration and the energy required has been released by the process of respiration now coming to the b part of the question transpiration and translocation now there is not many similarities in both of them there is no similarity in fact the differences are transpiration is the loss of water vapor from the leaves loss of water vapor from the leaves and translocation is the movement of sucrose and amino acids in the phloem from source to sink so uh, i mean that's why i've used different colors for it transpiration is the loss of water vapor from the leaves so that's two marks loss of water vapor from the leaves is two marks and this is four marks please remember and translocation which i have uh, using the green marker for it so translocation is the movement of sucrose and amino acids in the phloem from source to sink uh, the c part was phototropism and gravitropism so the similarity would be plant growth response both of them are plant growth response and either they are towards or away from the stimulus in phototropism in phototropism what is the stimulus it is light and in gravitropism it is gravity so as i said earlier in uh, compare you have to give me the similarities so phototropism and geotropism in gravitropism sorry phototropism and gravitropism in both the, the the response is a plant growth response and it is towards or away from the stimulus in phototropism the stem is going to uh, grow towards light please do not say move grow towards light in gravitropism the plant uh, the roots are going to grow towards gravity so gravitropism and is towards gravity and phototropism is to be concerned with light photo means light so that was very easy to now this was a total 12 marks last question and that completes this paper and thank you very much